I don't want to hold some old hairy knuckled boy's hand. I, I want my wife's hand. I want, I want it soft. <laughs> Y'all starting to get the idea about what, what you're supposed to be doing about wisdom? I, I, like, I like to hold my wife. She's soft and nice. If you're talking about wisdom, the wisdom of God, you've got to be like this with the wisdom of God. You've got to want to be with the wisdom of God. You've got to want to touch and hold the wisdom of God. You've got to not be scared of what God's going to say. You've got to be wanting to be around the wisdom of God. And and, 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 and it feels good when you're up close to the wisdom of God. It's what's referred to as a her. It's talking about the relationship between a man and a woman and the intimacy and the love between a couple that they they want to be together. and That's what it's talking about, wisdom. That it's this position that you want to be with wisdom. And when when we take a position... Thank you, my love. When we take a position... I give her a hand clap. That was... When we take a position with wisdom that oh, I don't really want to ask God because if you ask God and he might tell me to do something I don't really want to do. So you don't really want to get too close to God because he might whisper in your ear, hey, you need to stop doing that or you need to go do that. And you don't want it. Well, you're not, you're not holding on to wisdom. You're keeping wisdom. Now, just listen to me now. You're keeping wisdom in your footlocker. That you only want to pull out whenever you want to use it. And that's just to make the decision so it won't you won't get hurt. But then you put the wisdom back in the footlocker because you really want to do what you want to do. It's like, uh, Jesus, I really want you to be with me, but can you just wait in the car? I've got to go in and do something. Hello? So my wisdom is referred to as a woman because it's that relationship, that intimacy. The only way you're really going to walk with the wisdom of God is that you get saddled up with the wisdom of God and you stay saddled up and you want to be with it. You live your life of every day saying, Lord, I want to walk with you. I want to, I, I, I want to hear your voice. You're crying out to me and I want to be close to you. And I, I want to know how would you operate in this, Jesus, and what would you do? And, and, and Lord, speak to me and show me. And you want to be in that position. If you don't, and you're in the footlocker, then you're just going to be saying, okay, what I want to do what the devil says, I'm going to do what God says. Or what I say. And what you say, based upon you making your own decisions, if it's selfish, it just said that was demonic, so you really only had, you, you really thought there's not three choices. It's not you, God, and the devil. It's God and the devil. And you're going to follow one of them. Woo-hoo. Look at the person beside you and say, ouch. <laughs> Proverbs 1 7. Proverbs 1 7. Look at this. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and instructions. The fear of the Lord didn't mean like you're scared, oh God. Oh. No, it means that you understand that God is God and you, you're afraid to be away from Him. Listen to me, I do not want to walk into situations where I have to ask God to sit in the car. I don't want to come to this pulpit. If My biggest fear in life is that from that chair to this pulpit, the anointing will leave me. And when I get up here and stand up here and talk to you, and I'm telling you, if it ever does, I'm just going to walk off because I'm not going to say nothing. Because I don't have nothing to say without the anointing. Oh, I could sit up here and talk some trash, but I, you know, I don't know what good that's going to do anybody. Y'all with me? If God was to leave me, I don't want this position. 
My fear is that I don't want to lose my relationship with him. Like I don't want to lose my relationship with my wife. I don't want to lose my relationship with the, the wisdom of God into my life and holding on to that intimacy. I don't want to lose that. There's thoughts, and I, I believe that one day, because I, I, I am getting better and better over 25 years of serving the Lord, I, I'm getting better and better and better, but I believe there'll be a day come that the first thought that comes to me would be a pure thought. As of now, you know, we're on a good day, 70-30 good thought, pure thought. You know, on a bad day, we're 60-40 the wrong way. I was driving in San Antonio the other day, just minding my own business, driving down the road, trying to just mind my own business, just going right down the road, and just driving along there. And this guy pulls up beside me over here and just rah, 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 and, blah, blah, and throws me some signs and whatever. And I'm like, snapped. I just snapped. <laughs> I mean, if it had been the old West, I'd have just got out and said, man, just, you know, let's go for it right now. Go for it. <laughs> Boy, I was ready. And my wife said, what in the world is the matter with you today? And I said, I don't know. Hell's got in me today. I don't know. I'm just ready to throw down right here, wreck the car. I just mean, you know, my mind just went just crazy. And I was like, Robert. As you can tell, I still feel that I was wrongly accused of anything. (laughs) And still haven't got over the whole situation. So I went on down the road a little bit, and then there was another person, and I said, well, God bless them. And I, I didn't mean it, but I said it. <laughs> and then I got a little farther down the road, and I finally came up, and there was a person with their nose of their car stuck out in the road, and I slowed down, stopped, motioned them forward, go on, you know, and said, God bless him, and I really did mean it. It took me two tries to get there. <laughs> Y'all with me? The first wisdom I wasn't listening to, God's wisdom. The point is, church, it's always there. But the beginning of it is the fear of the Lord because I don't want to lose him. I'm not worried about him smoking me. If he killed me, I'd just go to heaven. (laughs) That's why when I fly on airplanes, I'm never worried about terrorists. I said, what are you going to do, kill me and send me to heaven? Glory to God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let's go, bud. Jump out of here. You know, I, I, the, but the fear I, I'm talking about is the fear of losing him. I don't want to lose him. I don't want to walk out of his grace. I don't want to get over there because it's an ugly place when you walk out of his grace. And you know that you did what was wrong. And man, I don't want any separation between me and my daddy. It says that's the beginning. That's the beginning of the fear of the Lord. Now, what? Look, look at this. Go to Proverbs 8.13. I've got a lot of Proverbs today, but it's good. Proverbs always talk about wisdom. Proverbs 8. Look at verse 13. Let's think about the fear of the Lord in, in another light here. It says in verse 13, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. He says if you're really walking in the fear of God and you don't want to lose him, listen to me, then you don't want to be around anything that isn't with of him. If you want the wisdom of the tree of life in you, you have to develop an attitude. As you don't want to be around that because God's not pleased with that. And I don't want to get mixed up in it. I saw on the news that... Uh, a town in California is having a cannabis day. And for those of you that don't know what cannabis is, it's marijuana. Medical. Medical marijuana, cannabis. And so that day, it's all legal to just smoke all the pot you want to on the streets. So I said, you know, well, that's an interesting concept. Uh, I'd like to see the fruit produced out of it. Have y'all ever seen the streets of New Orleans after Mardi Gras? I'm like, how did y'all think this was productive? The point being is, I don't want to be anywhere around that. Because I don't want to get involved in anything 
they wouldn't be pleasing to my heavenly father. Have you ever done something that you knew you shouldn't have done? Like, you know, like you were in a moment and you're, you're, how about gossiping? Let's just use that one. I mean, I know y'all don't ever do that, but I've heard of people that do. (laughs) And you were sitting there visiting with somebody and y'all were talking and the subject started getting off. And the next thing you knew, you were just, just outright gossiping. There wasn't any, you know, discussion to know how you might pray for the person's needs better. Christians are good about that. Well, we need to know what's going on so we can just pray for their needs. No, you just, you just want to gossip. It's all you want to do. I'm meddling now, aren't I? Had all of you right on. I mean, y'all were just following right along and all of a sudden said, that's it. Let's go home. I'm hungry. Put up this no more. But you got into the conversation then all of a sudden something down on the inside of you kind of went, eek. You got to a point and you're just like down on the inside of you just, eek. something turned. Just, you knew you shouldn't have said what you said. And you just kind of felt down here, you know, in your, in your soul. You just said, oof, I shouldn't have said that. Okay, that was, at that moment, the Spirit of God trying to give you wisdom. And you didn't do it, and the Spirit of God was grieved. Now, the good news is, great lesson to learn. So now you know right before that sick feeling kicks in, be quiet. Right? You know, if you can learn this. You see, you can only learn from your mistakes. If you say, well, I don't know. I've never felt that before, Pastor. Well, you have no earthly idea what I'm talking about. Or you're just a professional liar. (laughs) And you yourself are so deceived you have, you know, no idea what really is the truth. But if that, if that down on the inside of you just, you knew you shouldn't have done it. Folks, then learn from that. That right there was the tree of life trying to work into your life and speak to you. And if you'll get sensitive enough in your life to be detecting that, that, that impulse, that urge right down on the inside of your soul. You're, you know, some people can say it's your conscience, whatever. It's the Holy Ghost on the inside of you is trying to say, stop. 